in the previous episode. Probably this painting somehow got to our museum during the times when the museum exhibits were replenished around 1917. But unfortunately, we do not have data about how exactly the work got here. Five etchings of Rembrandt, paintings of José de Ribera, Ivazovsky, Turchok and the Dutch painting. The work has been on the list of paintings transferred abroad. Therefore, I was able to identify this work, which was considered to be the work of an unknown artist and was called, if I recall right, the rural scene. I was able to identify it as derived from the studio of Peter Bruegel, the younger, and to give a new title to it. The right title of this composition is The Procession of the Groom. Art Gallery. Today life is raging around this building, and a few centuries ago all the talks and sounds were fading away in this place. Located in the place of the old Polish cemetery, the church has experienced many ordeals back in the times of its construction. It was being built for a half a century and didn't serve as a holy place for even a century. But it has been functioning as an artistic shrine for almost 50 years. On September 9, 1569, the founder of the dynasty of artists that is famous until our days, Peter Bruegel the Elder died. He was known also under the name Peasant. On this land full of sin, the Flemish artist left a studio and a widow with three young children, two boys and a girl. When Peter Bruegel the Peasant died, his eldest son was only five years old. But the young son of the peasant Bruegel, Jan, was really a junior, so he virtually received nothing of his father's heritage. However, he went traveling to Italy and then became quite an independent artist, who was nicknamed Velvet Bruegel. But that was later. And then it was the widow who bore the burden of upbringing of three children. But in 1578, a new trouble came to the Bruegel family. The mother died. According to researchers, their grandmother became the first teacher of future outstanding artists. Who in turn was a widow of a very famous artist called Peter Cook van Alst. After the death of their mother, together with their grandmother, the children moved from Brussels to Antwerp. Here, the elder son of the peasant Bruegel continued the work of his father. After studies in Brussels and then in Antwerp were finished, he headed this huge workshop, which was mainly dealing with copies of Peter Bruegel the Elder. They were incredibly popular on the Flemish art market at that time. First he copied his father's paintings, then began to make own works. Peter Bruegel the Younger was a very interesting artist and he came up with several topics himself. For example, in the Hanenko Museum there is a painting of his name, which is called Return from Kermes, that is, from the celebration party and it is considered that this plot was invented by this artist himself. At the dawn of his working life, Peter Bruegel the Younger made paintings with scenes of hell, for which he was given his nickname Hell Bruegel. By the way, his father was nicknamed Peasant for depicting the peasant low life instead of the aristocratic high life.
Over time, Bruegel the Younger also gave in to the passion for genre scenes, numerous heroes of which are peasants. Peter Bruegel the Younger appealed to his father's legacy when he moved from Brussels to Antwerp and headed the studio, which was copying, as I said before, incredibly popular works of Peter Bruegel the Elder. And until the end of his life, he used scenes from his peasant life, which the procession of the groom alludes to. But if someone thinks that there is rural art, devoid of any sense and made on the peasant's order, then they're gravely mistaken, and even twice. Usually one who is not wise in this fear believes that peasant Bruegel painted pictures from rural life for rural residents only. But this is completely wrong, and even contrary to actual facts. He painted these works for intellectuals and humanists, and their main topic was regarded as models of behavior. All these scenes of peasant life in the works of both Peter Bruegel the Elder and his son Peter Bruegel the Younger were associated with certain patterns of behavior regardless of whether they were appropriate or not. The procession of the groom, which was painted already in the Antwerp period, is namely from that category. This was due to the theme Seven Deadly Sins, that was very popular in the 16th and 17th centuries. One of the deadly sins is intemperance. Usually this is an allegory of inability to control one's passion, for example, to drinking or gluttony, casually, clearly and pretty much resembling a poster. Here it is what such an example of non-decent behavior in a highly intelligent, educated public. It isn't for sure known when exactly this painting was created, but this is not the only riddle of the work. For a long time it was considered that all these copies of the works of Peter Prugel the Elder were done by his son's own hand. But in recent times it turned out, mainly thanks to the work of such a well-known researcher of the Bruegel family as Klaus Ernst, that in fact all pieces in the world museums that until recent times have been attributed to Peter Bruegel the Younger were actually painted by a number of artists who worked in his workshop. It is known that there was no such subject in the works of peasant Bruegel, which was copied by Hal Bruegel. How did this topic appear among workings of Bruegel the Young? After all, according to art critics, the painting also doesn't belong to him. But Klaus Ernst, whom I mentioned earlier, wrote that one of the contemporaries of Peter Bruegel the Elder, Martin van Cleve, very often depicted wedding subjects, and the workshop of Peter Bruegel the Younger copied not only paintings of his famous father, but also works of Martin van Cleve, the contemporary of Peter Bruegel the Elder. But the riddles of the Uman painting don't end there either. Researchers know for certain that Martin van Cleve, whose works were copied by the workshop of Heldbrugel, produced paintings in parallel subjects. On the one hand, he painted a wedding procession of the bridegroom. On the other hand, he created a wedding procession of the bride and the ceremony of the marriage feast. Probably the parallel work, The Procession of the Bride, exists somewhere, because he made a series of works on the theme of bridal processions.
The fact is that such a picture could be produced not in a single copy. The procession of the groom was a very popular subject, and this composition was repeated by different artists from the circle of Peter Bruegel the Elder, as well by the studio of Peter Bruegel the Younger many times. The reason being that these pictures sold well on the market, and the entire shop of the Guild of Flemish Artists, named Guild of St. Luke, was focused on selling paintings as a commodity. Of course, such popular stories naturally had a strong following. I think that there is not one version of this picture. To put an end to the story of the authorship of the Uman painting, we need to undertake an extensive study and the judgment of Western experts in the field of Dutch painting, which would take into account the notion of Klaus Ernst, the researcher of the Bruegel family. Basically, the problem of attribution of Ukrainian paintings, basically provincial ones, is the result of the Ukrainian colonial past. The past which in some way contributed to the gathering of a trove of artistic masterpieces in our country. The fact is that the museums of Ukraine are probably richer than the museums of our once huge homeland in terms of European paintings, because there were always the richest mansions and palaces which were built in Ukraine. It was a sunny land rich in grain. And all European educated large landowners, magnates and aristocrats whose summer residence were located on the territory of Ukraine usually brought a lot of works of art from Europe. The present Varvara and Bohdan Hanenko National Museum of Arts is a mansion that belonged to the manufacturer, archaeologist and philanthropist Bohdan Hanenko. The National Museum Kyiv Art Gallery is also a mansion that belonged to the Ukrainian entrepreneur, philanthropist and collector Fedor Tereshchenko. The Odessa Museum of Western and Eastern Art is also located in the palace of the Moldovan merchant Alexander Abaza. All of them in their time were overfilled with paintings. Therefore, with the exception of the Hermitage, of course, and probably the Pushkin Museum, museums of Ukraine have much richer collections of European paintings. Strictly speaking, the notorious Russian Hermitage owes its artistic wealth to Ukraine and its museums. Ukraine has always been a provincial part of a huge empire, and unfortunately, the philosophy of culture in the empire was that all the investigative forces and all the most significant parts of the collections were taken to the imperial center, to the capital, to Petersburg or to Moscow. Very often, Ukrainian museums were even literally robbed for this reason. I can recall a lot of works from our collection, which were found in the museums of Moscow and Leningrad, and have never been returned to our museum. The sole cultural center has to be in the capital, and any place wherever else is a backwater district. This is the cultural concept of any imperial and totalitarian country. While in a democratic country, culture exists everywhere, in the small towns of Holland, Germany, just take a look at Europe, each town has its beautiful museums, high-tech with a research center and with an excellent storage system. Probably it is great luck that the Uman painting got to Nazi Germany and not to the so-called friendly Russia. After all, the descendants and contemporaries of the Nazis proved to be way more conscious than the so-called liberators. In Germany, this picture came into the hands of a private collector, and the collector himself, when he found out that the work of Peter Bruegel the Younger, namely the procession of the groom, had been in the founts of the Uman Regional Studies Museum, he wrote a will, so that after his death, the painting would necessarily be returned to our museum. museum. 
During its ordeal in Germany, the work was slightly damaged and then the Germans once again confirmed that they were ready to redeem for the Nazis, and the Ukrainian side did not even have to embark upon the restoration. The painting came back from Germany having been already restored. Today the creation of the studio of Peter Bruegel the Younger keeps attiring the Uman Art Gallery and intriguing art historians both by its incredible riddles and by its greatest mastery.